I was any good girl. Ouch! What's the matter? Oh, wait. It is nothing. I... The creation of the magical world in I Dream of Jeannie began with the casting process, which was as fascinating as the show itself. For the role of Major Anthony Nelson, the producers wanted a handsome and charming actor who could convincingly portray an astronaut. After several auditions, they chose Larry Hagman, then known for his work on stage and in daytime television. Hagman's boyish charm and comedic timing proved to be a perfect fit for the character. The search for Jeannie, the Jeannie, was more challenging. Hundreds of actresses auditioned for the role, but it was Barbara Eden's audition that stood out. Eden, a seasoned actress, brought the right blend of innocence, humor, and sex appeal to the character. Her iconic costume, the pink harem pants and midriff bearing top, became a symbol of the show's playful spirit. The chemistry between Hagman and Eden was pivotal. They were required to test their on-screen compatibility before being officially cast. During the test, their natural rapport and playful banter were evident, convincing the producers that they had found their perfect pair. The supporting cast was also carefully selected. Bill Daly, who played the lovable and often clueless Roger Healy, was chosen for his comedic skills and ability to complement Hagman's character. Hayden Rourke, who played the strict and often bewildered Dr. Bellows, added a layer of authority and seriousness to the otherwise whimsical world of the show. The casting of I Dream of Jeannie was a crucial step in creating this classic television series. Each actor brought their unique talent and personality to their roles, contributing to the show's enduring popularity and charm. He said he was plum crazy for me. He even... The director of I Dream of Jeannie, Sidney Sheldon, had a clear vision for the show. He aimed to create a light-hearted and magical sitcom that would appeal to a wide audience. To achieve this, Sheldon drew inspiration from various sources, including classic fairy tales and the popular sitcoms of the time. Sheldon's approach to directing was characterized by his attention to detail and his commitment to collaboration. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every aspect of the show, from the acting to the set design, was carefully crafted to bring his vision to life. One of Sheldon's key creative influences was the classic fairy tale Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. He drew on this story for the central concept of I Dream of Genie, in which a modern-day astronaut discovers a magical genie in a bottle. In terms of style, Sheldon favored a fast-paced and comedic approach. He often used visual gags and physical comedy to enhance the show's humor and appeal. At the same time, he also sought to create a sense of warmth and charm, particularly through the character of Genie, played by Barbara Eden. Sheldon's collaborative approach to directing was evident in his relationships with the cast and crew. He worked closely with the actors, providing guidance and feedback to help them develop their characters. He also collaborated with the show's writers, contributing ideas and suggestions for the show's storylines and dialogue. In addition to his work on I Dream of Genie, Sheldon was also a successful novelist and playwright. His experience in these fields informed his approach to directing as he sought to create a cohesive and engaging narrative for the show. Overall, Sheldon's directorial vision for I Dream of Genie was instrumental in bringing this classic sitcom to life. His attention to detail, collaborative spirit, and creative influences all contributed to the show's enduring popularity and appeal. I Dream of Genie is a classic 1965 TV series that many of us know and love. The show features a genie genie who is played by the talented Barbara Eden. From funny episodes to shocking twists and even some sad moments, this series has it all. One of my favorite actors in the series was Larry Hagman, who played Major Nelson. His comedic timing and chemistry with Barbara Eden made for some truly memorable moments. As for my favorite role, I'd have to say Jeannie's mischievous and lovable personality was my favorite. She always managed to get herself and Major Nelson into some pretty hilarious situations. But what about you? Who was your favorite character in I Dream of Jeannie? And what was your favorite role they played? Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic TV series? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, whether you were a fan of the comedic antics, the magical elements, or simply the charm of the show, there's no denying that I Dream of Genie has left a lasting impact on television history. And with so many interesting facts and stories to share, there's never a dull moment when it comes to this classic series. Thank you. Oh, oh there she is. Oh. Thank you. 
In the late 1960s, a new TV series called I Dream of Genie captured audiences worldwide. This classic sitcom had unique set designs that added significantly to its charm. The creators wanted a distinct look for Genie's bottle home, so they turned to expert set designers. They crafted an ornate, magical-looking bottle complete with gilded accents and glass details. Interestingly, they used a real antique perfume bottle as inspiration. The show was primarily filmed on sound stages in California, but some outdoor scenes were shot elsewhere. For instance, parts of the third season were filmed in Palm Springs, giving viewers a change of scenery from their usual beach setting. However, moving location presented certain logistical challenges. Coordinating equipment transportation, cast availability, and permits proved to be quite complex. To overcome these obstacles, the production team relied heavily on careful planning and organization. Each scene was meticulously storyboarded beforehand, ensuring minimal disruption when it came time to film. Despite being produced over five decades ago, this degree of preparation wouldn't seem out of place even today. One notable technique used during filming involved hiding actress Barbara Eden's feet while she emerged from her iconic bottle. Since Jeannie's Jeannie costume didn't include shoes, a special platform was built inside the bottle to elevate her enough to conceal her footwear upon exiting. Such creative problem-solving highlights, the ingenuity often required behind the scenes of television shows. Although technology has advanced dramatically since then, many aspects of producing I Dream of Genie remain relevant today. From clever set design to efficient location management, this beloved series continues to resonate due to its high-quality production values, which stand testament to the hard work put in by everyone involved. <laughs> In the 1960s, a popular television series named I Dream of Jeannie graced the screens, capturing the hearts of many. This classic show followed the life of a astronaut named Tony Nelson, who discovers a bottle containing a genie named Jeannie, while on a deserted island during a space mission. Throughout the series, Tony and Jeannie navigate the complexities of their unique relationship, filled with magical mishaps and comedic moments. Jeannie, the genie, was a central character with her iconic pink costume and ponytail. She was portrayed as both playful and loyal, often using her magical powers to help Tony, but also causing unintended trouble along the way. The actress who brought Jeannie to life, Barbara Eden, was praised for her comedic timing and expressive acting, which contributed significantly to the show's success. The series was set in Cocoa Beach, Florida, where Tony and Jeannie lived in a beachside house. The show's creators successfully blended elements of fantasy and reality, making the magical aspects of the storyline feel plausible within the context of the show. I Dream of Genie was not just a comedy, it also explored various themes, such as the importance of friendship, love, and understanding. The show's characters learned to appreciate one another despite their differences, teaching viewers valuable lessons about acceptance and empathy. The series aired for five seasons, from 1965 to 1970 and has since gained a cult following. Its enduring popularity can be attributed to the timeless humor and relatable characters that continue to resonate with audiences today. In conclusion, I Dream of Genie remains a classic television series that has left a lasting impact on popular culture. Its unique blend of comedy, fantasy, and relatable themes has made it a beloved show for generations to enjoy. Bellows, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Bellows, well, I, I would love to, but only for one hour. I Dream of Jeannie, the popular 1965 TV series, is known for its enchanting storyline and memorable characters. A significant part of its charm lies in its music, which complements the narrative and emotional tone of the show. The creation of the musical score was a collaborative effort. Composers and musicians worked together to create music that would enhance the viewing experience. The show's theme song, Jeannie, is particularly memorable with its catchy tune and playful lyrics. It quickly became a fan favorite and is still recognized today. The background score, too, played a crucial role in setting the mood for each scene. For instance, light, whimsical music accompanied Genie's magical antics, while more serious scenes featured dramatic or suspenseful melodies. This careful use of music helped to heighten the emotional impact of the show. When asked about the process, one of the composers mentioned how they drew inspiration from the show's setting and characters. They aim to create music that would reflect the show's unique blend of fantasy and comedy. The musicians, too, spoke about the challenges and rewards of working on such a beloved series. 
This classic show's music has stood the test of time, continuing to captivate audiences today. It serves as a testament to the power of music and storytelling, enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of the show in a way that words alone cannot. You look so handsome, Master. Well, thank you, Jenny. Do you know who you should take tonight? No, no, who? Boosie Knight. After finding success in comedic roles during his high school years, Larry Hagman's career took off when he starred in the popular TV series I Dream of Jeannie. Following the show's conclusion, Hagman went on to star in the hit series Dallas, which prevented him from appearing in the two follow-up TV movies, I Dream of Jeannie 15 years later, and I Still Dream of Jeannie. In the first movie, Wayne Rogers took on the role of Major Nelson, who was on a space mission, and did not appear at all in the second film. Meanwhile, Michael Ansara, who played Genie's master in the show's early seasons, made his mark in the science fiction genre. He appeared in all four Irwin Allen TV series from the 1960s, including Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, and Land of the Giants. Despite Hagman's absence in the TV movies, I Dream of Genie remains a beloved classic, captivating audiences with its unique blend of humor and fantasy. A what? Uh, she's a fake, Genie. She's not charging him for the readings. I mean, she's after something. One of the most iconic scenes in the TV series I Dream of Jeannie is when Jeannie emerges from her bottle for the first time. The direction, performance, and cinematography all contribute to the scene's impact. As Jeannie blinks into existence, the camera focuses on her, creating a sense of wonder and magic. Actress Barbara Eden's performance is key, as she expertly portrays Jeannie's innocence and otherworldliness. In an interview, Eden recalled, I remember the first time I came out of the bottle, I had to do this little dance. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so silly. But it became one of the most iconic moments in the series. Another unforgettable scene is when Jeannie grants Major Nelson's wish to fly, resulting in a comical sequence of Nelson sprouting wings and attempting to take flight. The show's playful tone and the actor's comedic timing make this scene a classic. Director Sidney Sheldon aimed to create a light-hearted and magical atmosphere in the series. He once stated, I wanted to make a show that would make people smile and escape from reality for a while. The iconic bottle rubbing entrance of Genie is another notable scene. The sound effect of the bottle rub, combined with Genie's sudden appearance, became a signature element of the show. Eden shared, the bottle rub was a crucial part of the series, and I had to practice it to get it just right. These iconic scenes from I Dream of Genie have left a lasting impact on audiences, showcasing the show's unique blend of magic, comedy, and romance. The filmmakers and actors successfully created a timeless classic that continues to captivate viewers. Ooh. I'd prefer we test it on something else. Maybe... Oh, excuse me. In the realm of classic television, I Dream of Jeannie is a show that has left a lasting impression. Jackie Coogan, who was interviewed in talking to the piano player silent film stars, writers, and directors remembered by Stuart Erderman, was a part of this iconic series. The show had a notable connection with its so-called rival, Bewitched. Bill Daly, a regular cast member, even made a guest appearance on Bewitched. Barbara Eden, another prominent figure in the series, experienced a personal tragedy. Her son, Matthew Ansara, passed away in 21 due to an accidental drug overdose. He was only 35 years old when he was found in a parking lot off a freeway in Los Angeles, California. This tragic event, while not directly related to the show, is a part of the personal history of one of its main stars. I Dream of Jeannie, a 1965 TV series, brought magic and comedy into American homes, captivating audiences with its enchanting storyline. The show revolves around an astronaut, Tony Nelson, who discovers a bottle containing a 2,000-year-old genie, genie, and their unusual cohabitation. This classic resonated with viewers, providing a light-hearted escape from the realities of the mid-60s. The series influenced pop culture in various ways. Jeannie's iconic pink costume and ponytail became instantly recognizable and were often referenced or parodied in other media. The show's unique blend of fantasy, romance, and comedy also paved the way for future supernatural-themed sitcoms. Delving into social themes, I Dream of Jeannie contributed to discussions on gender roles, although perhaps unintentionally. Jeannie, a powerful and ancient being, often found herself in subservient positions to please her master, Tony. This portrayal, while seemingly reinforcing traditional gender roles, also opened the door for viewers to question the dynamics of power and equality in relationships. 
Moreover, the series showcased a blossoming intercultural friendship between Tony, an astronaut, and his neighbor, Dr. Bellows, an army psychiatrist. Their bond, despite Tony's secret, highlighted the importance of trust and understanding in friendships, transcending potential barriers. In essence, I dream of Genie, with its whimsical storytelling and endearing characters, left an indelible mark on television history and popular culture. Its exploration of social themes, albeit subtle, spark conversations and reflections among its audience, further solidifying its cultural significance. In the world of I Dream of Genie, several actors had interesting experiences and connections outside of the show. For instance, J. Pat O'Malley, known for his role in the series, had a name change early in his career. Starting as Pat O'Malley, he adopted the name J. Pat O'Malley upon arriving in Hollywood to distinguish himself from another actor with the same name. The young and talented Jackie Coogan, who also appeared in the series, experienced a life-threatening event in his childhood. When he was only six years old, an automobile accident left him with a severe basal fracture of the skull. Fortunately, after receiving medical treatment, he was able to recover and continue his acting career. Michael Ansara, another actor in the show, had a unique connection to the screenwriter Catherine Fugate. He was her ex-uncle-in-law, making for an interesting family tie to the series. These stories and connections add depth to the already entertaining I Dream of Jeannie, showcasing the diverse backgrounds of the talented individuals who brought the show to life. Else Major, open, open the door. Oh. I bring some papers home, you know. And open I... the door, Major. <laughs> I Dream of Genie, the popular 1965 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics but was well received by audiences. The show, starring Barbara Eden as a genie and Larry Hagman as an astronaut, was praised for its humor and chemistry between the leads. However, some critics criticized it for its lack of originality and compared it unfavorably to the similar show Bewitched. Despite the mixed reviews, I Dream of Genie was a hit with audiences and ran for five seasons and 139 episodes. The show's popularity led to it being rerun for many years, making it a classic of American television. The show received one Emmy nomination for Outstanding Costumes for a series in 1967. While it did not win, the nomination was a recognition of the show's visual appeal and the work of its costume designers. The accolades and nominations that I Dream of Genie received are a testament to its enduring popularity and the impact it had on American television. The show's success was a result of the hard work and talent of all those involved, from the actors to the writers, directors, and crew members. The nomination for an Emmy is a recognition of the show's quality and its place in the annals of television history. The show's lasting appeal is evident in its continued popularity today, with new audiences discovering it through reruns and streaming services. The show's humor, charm, and memorable characters have made it a classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. In conclusion, while I Dream of Genie received mixed reviews from critics, its popularity with audiences and its impact on American television are undeniable. The show's accolades and nominations, including an Emmy nomination, are a testament to its quality and enduring appeal. The show's success was a result of the hard work and talent of all those involved, and its place in television history is well deserved. In the world of 1960s television, two notable series made their debut on NBC on the same night, September 18, 1965. Among them was I Dream of Jeannie, a show that shared many similarities with Get Smart. Both shows featured female leads named Barbara, lasted for five seasons, and produced 139 episodes. I Dream of Jeannie followed the story of Jeannie, a genie, and her master, Major Anthony Nelson. The romantic tension between the two characters was resolved in the fifth and final season when they got married, ultimately ending the show. The series also had an impact on popular culture beyond the small screen. In Cocoa Beach, Florida, a frozen yogurt shop named I Dream of Yogurt opened, inspired by the show. The shop played episodes of I Dream of Genie for customers to enjoy while they ate their treats. Moreover, Ron Masak, an actor who appeared in the show's final season, had a tradition of riding in the Hollywood Christmas Parade with his wife, Kay, and other family members. They participated in the parade for 10 consecutive years, beginning in 2013. Unfortunately, the Cocoa Beach Yogurt Shop has since closed, but the legacy of I Dream of Genie lives on in the memories of its fans and the cultural impact it left behind.
trying to show Dr. Bellows that you're really a genie. You can come on. During the filming of I Dream of Genie, the iconic bottle that held Genie was a source of amusement and inconvenience for the cast and crew. The bottle was a prop from an old movie, The Brass Bottle, and it was quite small. Barbara Eden, who played Genie, had to squeeze herself into it, which was no easy task. In fact, she could only stay in the bottle for a few seconds at a time before needing to escape for air. Larry Hagman, who played Major Nelson, also had his fair share of challenges with the bottle. He often had to fish Genie out of it, which proved to be quite difficult due to its small size. The prop department even created a special tool to help him retrieve Genie from the bottle, but it often malfunctioned, causing delays in filming. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew of I Dream of Genie formed a close bond and had a lot of fun working together. Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman, in particular, became good friends and enjoyed playing pranks on each other. In one episode, Hagman convinced Eden to wear a bikini top made of pie plates, which she did without question. The scene ended up on the cutting room floor, but it became a memorable moment for the cast and crew. Another interesting behind-the-scenes fact is that the show's creator, Sidney Sheldon, originally wanted to name the show Bewitched. However, the name was already taken by another show, so he settled on I Dream of Genie instead. The show's pilot episode was even filmed under the title Bewitched, but it was later reshot with the new title. Overall, the making of I Dream of Genie was filled with laughter, challenges, and camaraderie. The cast and crew worked together to create classic television show that has endured for decades. Yes, Anthony. You called? Yeah, I, I was trying to show Dr. Bellows that you're really a genie. You can come on. The connection between Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman in the TV series I Dream of Genie was exceptional. Eden herself has stated that she never before or since had such a natural acting rhythm with any other actor. Their collaboration was truly special. Interestingly, the original theme song for the series, titled Genie, was written by Jerry Goffin and Carol King but it was rejected before the show's debut. The song that was eventually used, I Dream of Genie, became synonymous with the series. Larry Hagman, known for his role in I Dream of Genie, was a father of two. His children, Heidi Hagman and Preston Hagman, both made appearances on the popular series Dallas. Hagman's impact as a father and actor extends beyond the screen as his children followed in his footsteps. Sir, you know what I think? Uh, I think that I must have blacked out in the capsule, you aborted them. I Dream of Genie, the iconic 1965 TV series, holds a unique place in film history. This classic has left an indelible mark on popular culture through its imaginative storytelling and memorable characters. The show introduced audiences to a genie named Genie, played by Barbara Eden, who brings laughter and chaos into the life of astronaut Tony Nelson, portrayed by Larry Hagman. The groundbreaking sitcom paved the way for fantasy and supernatural elements in television shows that followed. Its innovative approach to blending humor and magical realism resonated with viewers, inspiring numerous imitations over the years. The chemistry between Eden and Hagman added warmth and charm to the fantastical premise, making the series even more captivating. Moreover, I Dream of Genie significantly influenced fashion trends during its time. Genie's signature pink costume became instantly recognizable, and continues to inspire cosplay costumes today. Additionally, the show contributed to the growing popularity of televised situation comedies in America throughout the 1960s. As a testament to its enduring appeal, I Dream of Genie remains relevant and beloved decades after its original run. Subsequent adaptations and spin-offs across various media platforms prove the show's timeless quality. A Broadway musical based on the series premiered in 2013 introducing new generations to the enchanting tale of Jeannie and her master. This influential TV series also launched the careers of many talented individuals behind the scenes. Director Gene Nelson, producer Sidney Sheldon, and cinematographer Robert Sullivan all made significant contributions to Hollywood both before and after their work on I Dream of Jeannie. Their combined expertise helped create a polished product that still entertains audiences worldwide. Ultimately, I Dream of Genie will always hold a special significance in film history due to its ingenuity, relatability, and whimsical exploration of human desires and dreams. By pushing boundaries and challenging conventions, this classic series leaves behind a rich tapestry of inspiration and enjoyment for generations to come. I don't know how to say this, but we just received word. Major Nelson didn't make it. The 1965 television show, 
I Dream of Genie, featuring Barbara Eden as the ethereal genius Genie, left an indelible mark on pop culture. In 2003, Eden's prowess as the show's star was recognized when she was inducted into the California Broadcasting Hall of Fame during a special ceremony. Before entering the magical realm of the small screen, Harold Gould, playing the meticulous Dr. Willard Smith, began his professional theater career with a debut in 1955, solidifying his thespian background. Meanwhile, Ron Masak, a key cast member, brought a diverse heritage to the series, with his Irish and Czech bohemian roots adding depth to his character's background. This classic TV show remains a cherished memory for many and continues to resonate with audiences today, even decades after its initial broadcast. Oh, don't be so hard-nosed, Doctor. Remember, the landing module is named after the dog. <laughs> Yeah, Snoopy. Uh, or Snoop, that's right, that's right. The title of the TV series, I Dream of Genie, draws inspiration from the first line of the 1854 ballad Genie, with the light brown hair by Stephen Foster. Interestingly, Ted Cassidy, who played the role of Genie's evil brother in several episodes, had a notable career outside of this classic. He served as the narrator for the Incredible Hulk's opening credits, and provided the Hulk's iconic growls and roars in its initial seasons. Moving on to the main character of the show, Tony Nelson, portrayed by Larry Hagman, donned various military decorations throughout the series. During the first four seasons, he wore the Airman's Medal, Air Force Commendation Medal, Air Force Outstanding Unit Ribbon, Korean Service Medal, and the Air Force Longevity Service Ribbon. However, in the fifth season, an extra ribbon was added, the UN Korean Service Medal, positioned beneath all others. These details add authenticity to Nelson's character as a distinguished astronaut in the United States Air Force. Oh, this is Dr. Bellis? Oh, well, I was calling Fresno, California. In the TV series, I Dream of Jeannie, Larry Hagman played a significant role alongside Barbara Eden. Interestingly, Hagman was just a month younger than Eden, despite his character appearing more mature. The show also featured Jackie Coogan, who had a remarkable life outside of acting. Unbeknownst to many, Coogan dedicated himself to raising funds for those affected by World War I. His efforts led him to tour across America and Europe in 1924, amassing over a million dollars in aid through a children's crusade. These donations equated to over $13 million when accounting for inflation in 2012. Coogan's humanitarian work earned him recognition from various institutions worldwide. Officials from the United States, Greece, and even Vatican City praised his philanthropic endeavors. During his visit to Rome, he received an audience with Pope Pius XI. Quite an achievement. It turns out that Coogan was also connected to another actor in the series, Don Stroud. Their relationship went beyond the screen, as Coogan served as Stroud's stepfather at one point. Clearly, both behind and in front of the camera, the cast members brought their own unique stories to I Dream of Genie. And Genghis Khan always wins. <laughs> In the world of television, some faces become synonymous with certain iconic roles. For instance, Larry Hagman is known for his appearance in every episode of the hit soap opera Dallas. Meanwhile, Dabney Coleman almost landed the lead role in the popular comedy Coach, but scheduling conflicts led to Craig T. Nelson taking over. Interestingly, both actors have connections to another beloved TV series, I Dream of Jeannie. While Coleman didn't star in it, he was considered for the role of Major Anthony Nelson before Larry Hagman took the part. Additionally, Barbara Eden, who played Jeannie, had previously auditioned for the role of Sue Ellen in Dallas, which eventually went to Linda Gray. On the other hand, Michael Ansara appeared in I Dream of Jeannie as Major Anthony Nelson's NASA rival, astronaut Roger Healy, while also having a recurring role as Klingon warrior Kang across multiple Star Trek series, making him one of only seven actors to do so. His versatility extends beyond these two shows, as he has made appearances in various productions ranging from Law and Order to Gunsmoke. These interconnected ties between actors and their respective projects make for fascinating behind-the-scenes stories. Major Nelson, yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, but... Uh... In the iconic TV series I Dream of Jeannie, which first aired in 1965, Paul Lend holds a unique place in show business history. Before his appearance on the show, Lind had the rare opportunity to sing on the Ed Sullivan show the song he performed nightly in the Broadway musical Bye Bye Birdie about the excitement of appearing on the show. Barbara Eden, who played the role of Jeannie, had her own claim to fame before joining the cast. In 1951, she was crowned Miss San Francisco, 
Her beauty and charm were undeniable, making her a perfect fit for the role of a magical genie. Jackie Coogan, who played the role of genie's master, Tony Nelson, also had an interesting background. He began losing his hair at a very early age, leading to jokes that he had already lost some hair before the kid was released. Despite this, Coogan's talent and charisma shone through in his performance, making him a beloved character in the series. In this classic TV show, each actor brought their own unique background and talent to the table, creating a memorable and entertaining experience for viewers. Oh, yes. That was my mirage too. I must have told him on the walkie-talkie. <laughs> of course you did. You saw it. In the third season of the popular TV series, viewers may notice a small detail near the Nelson Holmes front door, a sign saying the Bell and Hand Tavern. Interestingly, this historic bar has been serving customers since 1795 in Boston, Massachusetts. Shifting focus to the actress who played Jeannie, Barbara Eden, her childhood was marked by wearing glasses, an eye patch, and pigtails, making her quite shy. Her mother encouraged her to take up singing lessons to boost her confidence. As revealed in Eden's memoir, titled Genie Out of the Bottle, co-star Larry Hagman expressed strong distaste towards his character in many of the creator Sidney Sheldon scripts. Despite these challenges behind the scenes, the magical charm of the genie and her master continued to captivate audiences episode after episode. Am I she? <laughs> oh, you sweet boy! You remembered about your mother's back. In the iconic TV series, I Dream of Jeannie, Larry Hagman, who played the role of Major Anthony Nelson, had an unusual discipline. He refrained from speaking one day a week, pushing his self-control to its limits. Woodrow Parfrey, who portrayed the character of General Schaefer, had a remarkable past. Before his acting career, he fought at the Battle of the Bulge during World War II. His experiences left him with wounds and a German captivity, shaping the tough and eccentric characters he later played. Barbara Eden known for her role as Jeannie, has a personal connection to the present day. She is the aunt of Catherine Fugate and the godmother of Catherine's daughter, Madeline Barber Fugate. This classic series continues to resonate, leaving a lasting impact on its audience. Did I dream of Jeannie leave a lasting impression on you? This classic TV series brought magic and laughter into our homes with its enchanting story of an astronaut who discovers a bottle containing a genie. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this beloved show. Perhaps you found inspiration in Genie's unwavering loyalty or Tony's daring adventures. Or maybe you simply enjoyed the humor and fantasy that filled each episode. Share with us how I Dream of Genie impacted you personally or influenced your perspective on cinema. Tell us about the first time you saw the show or a particular episode that resonated with you. Your stories and insights are invaluable, and we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's reminisce and appreciate the timeless appeal of this iconic series together. So, don't hesitate to leave a comment below and start a conversation. We can't wait to hear from you. Me too. I've already seen both of you. Well, I can fix that easy enough. I'll put him back.